welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We are back with our very special guest, Dr. Bill Warner of politicalislam.com. Dr. Bill has written a number of books on Islam that you need to read. Please go to his website and check it out. We want you educated so you know the background for the opinions that Dr. Bill is going to give us now. Welcome back, Dr. Bill Warner. Delighted to be here. So let's pick it up with Hijira. Can you explain that to me? Because it seems to be what's happening in Western Europe, Canada, Australia, and the United States to a very big degree. Tell us what it means and what we should know about it. Well, you should know first off that Muhammad's movement from Mecca to Medina, he preached the religion of Islam for 13 years in Mecca. And after that, they t told him, says, you have to leave. They found him to be an irritant in their community. He went from Mecca to Medina. Now that is called the Hijra, which means migration. Now, it's interesting. The Hijra you would, is used to date the Muslim calendar. You would think if you're going to create your own separate calendar, and since Islam is separate on everything, they would have their own separate calendar, that you would have it such that it was maybe on the day of the first revelation, or the calendar would start on the birth of Muhammad, something like that. But the calendar starts, the zero day is when he migrates from Mecca to Medina. Why is this? Because the Hijra was what led to success. Before he moved to Benina, he was a failure. I say converting 10 people a year is not a real successful career. So, but then he became overwhelmingly successful. And when he died, every Muslim in the, on the, what we call the Arabian Peninsula now was a Muslim. So success came from migration. But here's what migration led to. After migration, he became involved in politics and jihad. Now, there are 89 verses in the Quran which state that every Muslim is to pattern their life after Muhammad. So what does that mean? Well, that means after you migrate, you should try to make that country Islamic. So that's the deep background of the Hijra. So it's, it's basically jihad by migration. You got it. So I've, I've heard a number, and I mean a large number, of Islamists talk about, we will flood your country with our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, there's just a few, and then there's more, and then all of a sudden there's a big number. And yep. you can look at Western Europe, France, um, Sweden, Denmark, Great Britain, where they're all experiencing that. Mm -hmm. So it's a coordinated plan going all the way back to the days of Muhammad. Everything goes back to the days of Muhammad. Look, Islam is a system whose purpose it is to move your society to the year 632. <clears throat> that was the day Muhammad died. In other words, in the beginning, if there's not enough of us on the inside, we'll send enough there, mm -hmm. and a political revolution will take place from within. There's something else going to be interesting happen. Have you ever looked at who these migrants are coming into Europe? They're mostly military-age men. Well, now... Where are these military age men going to find wives for children to set up families? Well, simple, they'll be Europeans. So the European women will become the agent of producing more Muslims. It's brilliant. It's something. By the way, <laughs> population jihad leads to final jihad. That is, once you have overwhelming democrat demographic conquest is permanent. Let's put it that way. Let's talk about the allies of the radicals, as it were. Um, it seems to me that the progressive left has become the ally, at least in the United States, of the Sharia promoters. This is true, in Europe as well. Does that make sense? Well, let's see the similarities between the left and Islam. They're both totalitarian, all right? They both want to take over the world. And so they both hate the society they live in. So the left sees themselves as a hammer and the Muslims see themselves as an anvil. And between the two, they'll bring our society down. Now the left hasn't done much thinking beyond this because if they did, they would know that they're buddies right now with the Muslims, but that's only temporary. 
You remember Khomeini and the rise to power and when the Shah of Iran was overthrown? Sure. Well, you think, well, it was the Muslims who did that, but it was primarily the Tudor party, which was the communist party in Iran. It took, Maha it took not Muhammad, it took uh, him, Khomeini, five days after he rose to power to issue death warrants to every communist party leader. So his good buddies were no longer his good buddies, they were thrown under the bus while their heads got removed. So this is, this is the purpose. So they thought they were good allies, but they're only temporary allies. So in other words, the progressives, and I mean the radical progressives, um, mm -hmm. the communists, the wildly um, anti-capitalist socialists, um, the ones that want to take down the border, that want free everything for everybody, they believe, and, and I think they really believe, that they are the allies of and um, the supporters of Muslim freedom, and probably also believe that Muslims support their agenda, when in reality, what you're saying, I believe, correct me if I'm not getting this right, that that alliance will last right up until the day a Khomeini-like person would take power here, and then everybody who's not a believer is on the enemies list. That is correct. That is correct. Wow. Now, let me point out something else here, though. The Muslims not only have friends on the left, they also have friends on the right. I know of conservative or uh, evangelical Christians who are very pro getting along with Islam. So the key term here is apologist. All right? The apologist is the ally of the Muslim. And you can, be from the, you can be a Jew, you can be a Christian, you can be an atheist and be this, you can be a member of the right or the left. So long as you're advancing Islam, you're an apologist. But the left does have a certain predilection for this. And it's even more true in Europe. So like we just talked about, those apologists are best friends right up until they're not needed anymore. Perfect phrase, till they're not needed anymore. So you talk about the haters um, being driven out of business. What, what do you mean by that? Well, let's go back with my own personal history here. I've been doing this since 9-11. Now, as a process of just natural accumulation, I became more and more powerful on social media. Here's an example. It used to be, if you Google the term political Islam, I owned the top three screens. That is, it was just me, 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 me. Those all disappeared. Why? Well, there's a reason for this. You see, the Southern Poverty Law Center, which is the high ethical authority in our society, they're the ones who have a catalog of haters and I'm on their list. As a matter of fact, Barry, at one time I was considered by the Southern Poverty Law Center to be one of the top 10 bigots in the entire United States. It's quite an honor. <laughs> well, it is an honor. And I just, I, I, it didn't bother me. I mean, it, at first it's like, what, me, not really? But then what happens is, is that they had a, there was a meeting done in Florida with Media Matters financed by George Soros. And Southern Poverty Law Center and others said, it is not enough to attack these people with names. We need to drive them out of business. Go back to Google, around the top screens on the search for political Islam, two thirds of those went away. My book, Sharia Law for Non-Muslims, was the best-selling book on Amazon on Sharia law, on Islamic law, disappeared. All of a sudden, all these things went on YouTube. Before Media Matters, YouTube actually contacted me and said, Bill, you don't know what you're doing and you're successful. Let us teach you how to be a better YouTuber and you'll have real success. So I went from them actually calling me saying, you're really, you don't know what you're doing, but you're great. And then boom, I was demonetized on YouTube. Now, and is it, is it still that way? Yeah. So their purpose now is to drive us out of business. Now I suppose that's some honor. I mean, I, do you realize who I have for enemies? I have Facebook. Twitter, Google, I mean, these are major brands, and they've and YouTube, and they've said, Bill is our enemy. It is astounding that one person would be considered the enemy of these vast corporations, and yet I am, along with others. I mean, it's not just me. I don't, I don't want to make this a pity party for Bill. I'm just giving you, these are my life examples, and Robert Spencer, and I'm sure Jamie Glazoff, and everyone else has been attacked by these people. Here's the reason no they attacked No doubt, you're right, and 
we all as witnesses to it can affirm that what you're saying is the truth. It is true. Thanks for joining us on ATP Report today. I want a special thanks to Dr. Bill Warner. Please go to his website, Political Islam, and start ordering his scholarly books that are written in plain everyday English so you can understand the background. Without the education, you don't know what you're dealing with. I also ask you to please take out your cell phones and text the word truth, T-R-U-T-H, that's the message, and send it to 88202 so you can be subscribed to our text message service. It's free. You'll get our videos and publications, essays on an almost daily basis, and all you got to do is open your cell phone to see it. Thanks, Bill, and thank you, our wonderful viewers, for joining us today for ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum.